Hey up folks, yeah, welcome to part two of uh, Project Jonas, the Luthier's Lair series detailing a custom gas base quintessence build. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, I have most of the parts in now, just a couple that I'm waiting on, uh, including a Macassar uh, ebony fingerboard, which I'm looking forward to receiving. Uh, but I can I can start the build now. And I want to start off with uh, actually the control plate, which is very, probably maybe, a, you know, an unusual place to start. But uh, we, uh, with my customer, we did review uh, certain things and uh, he wanted this um, specialised front mounted control plate. And I thought, oh, that looks really good. Let me have a... Uh, a finagle with this and uh, let's uh, try different designs you know you some prototype in there and so we're going to start with that and then we'll move on to actually starting to manufacture the neck so uh, yeah we can get a head start on this I do like to make the neck first uh, because it gives it time to relax when I'm doing the other parts of the build necks very crucial of course in any guitar so without further ado Let's go for it. So, here we are at the CNC machine. And I'm just going to show you, well, here's the body shape, as you'll probably know. The quintessence body shape. If you've been following the quintessence builds, let's put this on. A bit more light. Yeah, so, yeah, first off, we're going to start with the control plate. I never usually start with the control plate, but I wanted to experiment with a couple of ideas that I have. The customer wants a 0.25 inch thick reliefed and beveled control plate. And this was the first idea I came up with based on certain photographs that the customer had sent me. And as you can see, it's a maple uh, walnut veneer with maple trim. 0.25 inches thick. Now, here's the layout. Hold on, I'll just go and grab me, uh, grab me knobs. Hold on. Yeah, I've just got some spare knobs here. Uh, I initially put this hole here as the jack, and these, the four here, one, two, three. For, uh, for the uh, for the EQ and then two switches here one for uh, to switch between series uh, split and parallel on the single music and style humbucker pickup that's going to go in there and the second switch to switch between 9 volts and 18 volts supply to the preamp and I thought yeah, you know putting the jack there is going to get in the way these look kind of uninteresting if the plate's going to sit, uh, sit about there, that looks kind of uninteresting to me. I don't know. So I did do another drawing, and we're going to get to, to that just now. Let me put me knobs away. And uh, nice piece of wood, though. Yes. And what we're going to do is we are going to reuse this piece which is a perfectly good piece of wood, that was the first one and I'm going to do actually uh, a design where the jack plate is going to be here which is makes much more sense and then the controls are going to sort of diagonally stagger up the way from the rear of the base to the front and the switches will be sort of here and here so you have nice clearance so you're not accidentally hitting a switch while you go down to to adjust the the EQ down there. So let's start manufacturing that, shall we?
All right, let's take a look at both plates that I just uh, manufactured. Uh, one with a straight line there and one with a diagonal line there. You'll notice the hole here is much bigger and I'll go into that in a minute for the jack outlet. The jack outlet here and the jack outlet there. Now, here's how this would appear with the knobs on it. Fairly straightforward. You know, and then a switch would be here for 9 to 18 volts and a three-way uh, switch here to choose between series, split and parallel pickup configurations. Now, sorry about the shadow there. The jack would be here and I didn't like that. Like I explained, I'd like it to be further over there. And by the way, it's not going to be chrome knobs on this. They're going to be turned uh, wooden knobs on this. Probably I'm going to go for a split design of different woods to match the walnut or give contrast, sorry, to the walnut. So, okay, fine, but I think this configuration is much better. The knobs are a little closer together, but they lead up towards the neck, you know, and they back off from the pickup which is much more sort of conventional, I think. So it gives you an idea there. And then of course, with that being an extra big hole here, I can use this jack plate, which will keep actually gold, because it is hardware, like so. And then we've got the switch for nine to 18 volts here, and our pickup select switch, our, our coil select switch here. For the single pickup that's going to go on it and obviously i mean the pickup's going to have a wooden cover on it too first time i've done that i know how to make them though i have run some nifty tests and quite quite amazed at the results so yeah i think that's probably the favorite and if you can imagine those knobs being you know wooden in construction with a nice gold jack plate there you're gonna have the gold uh hip shot bridge here, then the pickup, then a little space, then the neck will start. I think that will, will look great. And there's a nice relief here. It needs to be all sanded down, sealed, finished, everything. And it's going to look really nice. I think I think this is the one to go for. Nice ergonomic, uh, well, not really, yeah. I guess aesthetically pleasing design there. I've already designed the uh, routing cavity for this cover. And uh, we should be ready to go with that. I think it looks good. So, let's get cracking. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay, first step is uh, making the neck, neck calf. What we're going to do, we have our maple blank clamped into place and I have indexed this board. I found the exact centre point on both sides of this plank of maple, which will be a bass guitar neck. I always scribe a centre line in various places on the, on the waste board so I know exactly how the machine is running. You can't judge it being parallel by measuring from the end of the waste board. Don't do that. Scribe a line in the machine and the machine tells you where the line is. So you match up dead centre on both sides because this is a two-sided carve. The, the first carve I'm going to do will be the truss rod and the reinforcements. Then I'll go on to the bend well and then after that, I will be flipping the neck and then I'll be cutting the contour outline with tabs and I'll double space that because I've got to get in there uh, with a flat end mill and a ball end mill to make the final contour of the neck, which is going to be uh, a D-shaped contour, much like a, a Kubitsi X-Factor or maybe a Warwick Thumb Bass or a Warwick Dolphin, some, some profile like that. 
it's going to be like a hybrid of that. So we're going to go ahead and make, make an egg now. Good fun, eh? Yeah, so the good thing about designing a neck and a headstock in this fashion is, you know, I have, I usually design headless bases on the Falcon Series too, but on other bases I don't. And the good thing about this is, is that, you know, so not only does this allow me to, uh, machine a headstock on its own because you know I have limitations on the bed size of the CNC machine it also allows me to do some 
wacky shapes, but this is a very popular shape right now. I call it the kind of the Pangborn shape. You know, and that just fits on there. And then when you glue it down, put a veneer on it, it it's, it's wonderful. So, you know, uh, neck needs sanded down. Still has tool marks and stuff in it, but that's fine. But we're going to uh, sand down this uh, headstock a little bit now to just get it into shape. And then we'll be good. The neck, we can call the neck kind of finished after I uh, sand the neck. Shaft. Naughty word. Anyway. Headphone users, beware. <laughs> I've got a piece of maple here that would match the neck although it doesn't really need to but you know the grain structure is the same and I'm going to get a good bond when I attach this headstock onto the neck it's, it just looks fantastic and you know I've, I've uh, multiple choices of veneer to go from uh, when I uh, get my bottle olive in from Turkey which might be a, another week yet, then I can decide whether to put that on top, clean this down a bit and put that on top, or just go for something else. It gives me so much um, uh, choice and variety and just flexibility in, in building something like this. So it's, it's just good design decision. And uh, yeah, let's keep going. Well, that's it for part two of Project Jonas. Yes, indeed. Uh, oh, there's a cockroach. Hold on. There you go. Yeah, sometimes... <laughs> I'm not going to edit this out. Uh, sometimes I get uh, cockroaches in the workshop. I do have a couple of lizards that like to come in and eat the roaches, but uh, this, this one got out of the way of the lizards and so I used that and now it's gone so yes part two was interesting <laughs> uh, yeah so um, that was a surprise uh, part three I'm gonna uh, get the neck all stabilized and sanded and then uh, we'll have a look at uh, working on maybe uh, a wooden pickup covers that should be interesting so until then Hopefully roach free. Uh, stay safe. Be good. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Take care, guys. <laughs> See you. Bye bye.